I want to review last week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Actually, I remember how I said it to you. The next time I preached to you, I didn't say next week, but the next time, I made sure I said that correctly so you wouldn't, wouldn't beat me up over that. But in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, the scripture says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeketh finds. To him that knocks, it shall be opened. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus went up on the mountain. In Matthew chapter 8, he's coming down the mountain. The curious point of the message is simply that while Jesus was on the mountain, he talked about a lot of different things. But he did say, ask. And on his way down the mountain, a leper approached him. In verse 1, chapter 8, it says, When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you will, you could make me clean. So he was listening. He was there from chapter 5 to chapter 8. He was listening to what Jesus said. And he heard Jesus say, if if I ask, if I seek, if I knock, then this could happen for me. And what I've got is this leprosy in my life. And so he went and asked Jesus. And of course, as he did that, and the lepers, you know, they're a reason why we pull away from God. A guilt, condemnation, fear, shame, inferiority. The scripture says in James 4, 8, draw close to God, he'll draw close to you. So the issue is not for uh, God drawn to us. He wants us to make the first move. And when we move, when we seek, when we knock, when we ask, then he responds to that. Hebrews tells us, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance. So this leper came to where he was, and he worshipped him. Worship is thankfulness, it's gratitude, it's appreciation. That's what worship is all enveloped in. And when you, when you worship, you're just not tell, you're telling God how wonderful he is, but you also tell him thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, again, the joys I've had over the last 10 days, the fellowship of family, uh, the riding through the mountains. Uh, you know, we rode 600 miles in a day and a half through... Uh, uh, some of the most beautiful and I said I couldn't help myself there are times I just let go of the bars and gave God praise you can do that when you're sitting still on your motorcycle Amen. But I just gave God praise for all the goodness and his handiwork. And so verse 2 says, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. And he said, I am willing. In other words, I'm willing because you draw, you came toward me. You asked of me. You sought me. You, you knocked out on my door. So I am willing. Be clean. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Now, this takes us into today's message. If you're in 2 Kings chapter 5, and I'll be there in just a few minutes. I want to give you a synopsis of the story before we get into it. But there are times we ask, we don't like the answer. So first, I'm telling you to ask. And second, I'm telling you there's certain things you may ask for, and you don't like how the answer came back to you. You thought it may be a certain way. So the events in this passage took place in ancient Israel when Elisha was God's prophet. You remember, Elisha is the man that took Elijah's place with a double portion of what his mentor had. Uh, Elijah, somewhere around 600 B.C. And these were the days when the promised land was divided into two kingdoms, Israel in the north and Judah to the south. It almost caused a civil war. It was a time of political and moral decline. And because of this, the people of God were oppressed by their enemies, particularly the Syria. Joram was king in Israel at the time. He was the son of the wicked king Ahab. And Elisha had succeeded Elijah as God's prophet. Now as the head of this impressive column of military might, in my mind, a snow-white stallion, the man of the hour, the general, who was once again lead of the army into victory. The scripture describes him as this way. His name was Naaman. He is general of the armies of the king of Syria. He is a favorite, a close friend with his nation's ruler, King Benadab. In fact, Naaman was a very popular man. Everyone liked him. You would too if you knew him. Shining in the sun are the metals. Naaman had won on the field of battle through all his career as a man of great courage. You can picture him as he rides astride the magnificent steed in the uniform of a general. But notice that thrown care carelessly across the chest and draped over his arms is a brightly colored sash. Such a bit of decoration to brighten his uniform. But you know, wait a minute, if you look at it again, just as we thought, the sash is not carelessly thrown over his uniform. It's tucked in very carefully. It's wrapped around one of his arms and one of his hands. It's almost as if he is trying to hide the arm, his hand. The truth is, Naaman was hiding something. He was concealing something a lot of us conceal in life. Amen. A terrible fact from the public and maybe even from, the, uh, from himself. The scripture says this mighty man was a leper. 
I remember as a young man, when I got born again, I had warts on my hands, and I would get, stand in church, and I, always, I was a front row believer, and I would throw my hands in the air, and I'd worship, and I'd look, and I'd see the warts on my hands, and I'd draw my fingers back, and eventually I'd pull my hands down in shame, because I thought, you know, those warts look so bad, and you've heard the story. I asked God, please, God, take the, I've had them burn off, I've had them froze off, I, 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 they, they cover my fingers and around my nails, I got a great big one on my big toe, you know, which nobody else sees, and that's okay, because it's covered, they don't see that, but my hands, they see my hands, I, I, I'm, I'm, um, self-conscious about shaking hands, you know, in case somebody says, hey, you got six fingers. I, I, I didn't want that. And, and so I, I, I would draw back from people and I ask God, take them away. I ask. Come on. I ask God. Come on. I ask him, take it away. You know, I, I'm, your, I'm your kid now and I, I need help here. Take it away. And I remember I was in church and, and uh, after praying that way, I, I had my hands lifted. And as my hands were lifted, I looked and realized, the warts were all gone from my hands. And I thought, God, you are so good. And I remember going home, and I took my shoe off. And I, I looked, uh, uh, and on the bottom of my big toe, the wart was gone. And I, I went running through the house with my foot in the air, and I stuck it in my mother's face. And as soon as I did, my mom looked at it, and she knew what I was doing. I said, it's gone. Look, Mom, it's gone. And she saw it, and I said, I ask. I ask. I asked God to take it off, and he took it away. And I've never had it with it since. I mean, it's not one of those things that came back. It just, it just stayed away it's because I asked God. And, and, you know, there are times that I've asked that I, I may not have got my answer immediately, or, or maybe the answer was no. But on that one there, it was yes. Second Kings chapter 5, are you comfortable? I saw Dee just get comfortable right then. <laughs> Amen. She just tucked her leg underneath herself there. 2 Kings 5 tells us this. Now, Naaman was commander of the army of, the, of Aram, King Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had, he had what? Leprosy. Now, he, now, bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel. And she served Naaman's wife. So here we have the slave girl and we have her, the master uh, being Naaman. She said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who was in Samaria. In other words, when she was kidnapped, she worked with some people in Samaria and she knew of the prophet Elisha. He would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him that the girl from Israel had said, by all means go, the king of Aram replied. Let me mention this to you. I can promise you this king had seen physicians. He had seen seers. He had gone places to try to take care of his leprosy. The king has the most uh, uh, powerful medical staff of anywhere else in the world at that time, and nobody could cure him. But there was a little girl who had faith who was a, a slave girl who said, I had a master, and this man could do some stuff now. Amen. I mean, he could throw his sash down and waters would part. He, he, I'm telling you, he, he eventually before, maybe after he's dead, he'll raise the dead. He's the only dead who raised the dead. Right. Amen. That's amazing. Elisha's body was put into a grave. Do you know this? It was put into a grave, and they threw a dead soldier on top of him, and God raised the dead soldier when it hit Elisha. He's the only dead that ever raised the dead. Mm -hmm. Come on, Jesus. Amen. So, so the king of Aaron replied, I'll send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, ten thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read this. With this letter, I'm sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Let me remind you, a lot of times a text is incomplete. I said a lot of times a text is incomplete. You'll text somebody and say, uh, well, you do this, but what you're, you, you, there's more to it than that. So make the phone call. Go ahead and talk to them so that it's straight up. I have had more misunderstandings with my texts. And stay, even, I don't care if it's on Facebook or what. You, you'll get something. You go, what in the world is this all about? And you realize that, that you meant left and they thought right. And you're in, so here, here the king gets left and said, this, 
uh, cure this mental leprosy. And he goes off into it. He said, as soon as he read it, he tore his robes. He said, am I God? Can I kill? Can I bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me? He tried to start a fight with me. Then Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes. He sent him a text and said, why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman, with his horses and chariots, st uh, and, and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored. And you will be cleansed. Father, I thank you for your word. Your anointing is so needed today. I thank you for your blessing on us lepers who need you more than anything else. In Jesus' name. And everybody shout. Amen. Amen. Wave at one another before you sit down. Would you do that? Just kind of wave at one another there. Kind of just look back and wave. There you go. Hallelujah. We're doing the wave. I've talked with several pastors over the last few weeks. As a matter of fact, I've had two friends, two pastors, one in Florida and one here in Houston, that's had the virus, gone through it, getting through it, and they're over it now. I've had others who, uh, other churches that I know are very long, most of these are always large churches that I have decided they're not going to have church again until January. You know, so they've made these decisions, you know, but I, I thank God you showed up today. Amen. I thank God that you're pressing through and that we're just going to deal with this thing the best we can. Leprosy. The scripture says this man had leprosy. Leprosy starts with a spot. It deals with your nerves, your sensitivity. It deals with muscle. It takes away strength. It deals with your limbs. When no limbs and unable to move your limbs, you lose production. Production equals fulfillment. No fulfillment, no hope, no purpose in life. It takes away sight. Your, your, your eyes, it be, you, you don't even blink your eyes when you feel pain because of the nerve endings. Your, your mind, your sensibility, your voice box, your speech, your, which what to me has to do with prayer, has to do with praise. And I look at this and I think to myself, God, there are times I, I know that I have had leprosy. That if this is the definition of it, I have lost my sensitivity and hurt people's feelings. I've said the wrong thing to them at times. My muscles, my strength have given out without you. My limbs have not produced like I should. My hearing, I, there are times I know you're talking, but I ain't listening. I, I'm doing my own thing. My sight, my vision, I've lost vision. This is the year of 2020. But you know, listen, in 2015, somebody asked you where you would be in five years. You had no idea you'd be right here. Yeah, I mean, this was not, a, and we did not see this coming. All the things that's taking place this year, our, our mind, our sensibility, our, our ability to praise. At times, we forget to give God thanks and to give Him praise. So it started with a spot, as all leprosy does, and then it ends in desperation. You hit a place in life where i got to have God. I don't know what else to turn. I've been to the doctors. I've been to the pharmacy. I've been everywhere else. I've been to the, uh, the, uh, the healing preachers. But all of a sudden, a voice of a little servant girl said, my master can do incredible things. It's amazing his, his walk with God. If you'll go there. And, and, and so he brings all this gold, 10 sets of, uh, of, uh, of clothes with him. He goes there. He's got an entourage with him. He is the valiant uh, commander, Naaman. When they saw him, they knew who he was. Face covered, arms covered. He has this leprosy that is protruding. He wants an answer for it. But verse 11 says, we, after Elisha said, go dip yourself in the pool. There are times, listen, there are times we ask, we don't like the answer. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. Wave his hand over the spot and cure me with my leprosy. You know what that speaks of? Arrogance. Look how important I am. I ain't going to no front of no church to get prayer. I'm not going to do what the, the pastor said. I'm not going to pray that way. I'm not going to do that. I want God to wave his hand. Just, just wave your hand over me and I'll be well. Just speak it and I know it'll happen. And he didn't like the answer. You know, God's always working on our character. He's always dealing with our pride. Here's one of the most prideful men in, in all of, of Israel at this time there. And so he gets up and we, we do the same thing. We, how do we think it should be done? Well, my pastor did it this way, or, or my preacher did it that way. Well, he, they, he would blow on me, and I could, I could feel the wind of God, and I'd fall down. And, or he'd speak. Or, I, I, I have found there is no way. God just does what he do. Amen. And he, he, he breaks things down for us. And, and so Naaman gets a little upset, and then he says, Hey, listen, if this has to do with going into water instead of the muddy Jordan, I know two other rivers that are nice and clear. 
Take me to the Abana, the far, far, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and he went off in a rage. Naaman's servant went to him and said, my father, and, and I love the language that I'm reading here. My father, he's a servant. He's a slave. And yet he calls him father. There's an understanding of the spiritual father here. If the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? The most feared disease of the ancient world had, had to be this disease of leprosy. And because of this terrible truth, Naaman's whole career had come to mean nothing. As a matter of fact, his fame, his fortune didn't really matter anymore because of this disease of leprosy. Today, we refer to leprosy as Hansen's disease. It's called HD for short. And doctors now, no offense, amen, but doctors now know that the cause of HD's destruction is really very simple. You see, uh, Hansen's disease does it in itself cause the extremities to rot and fall away. It simply destroys the nerves that cause healthy people to feel pain. The destruction of the body tissue comes when wounds are not treated because the person feels no pain and they grow infected and rot away. Many lepers go blind because they never have the sensation of discomfort to cause them to blink and wash foreign objects from their eyes. Today we have medication to treat leprosy. In the vast majority of the cases it can be arrested in the early stages. But in Naaman's day, in his day, to get leprosy was to die. So do you see how Naaman is now desperate, how he must have felt? And thanks to this illness, his achievements in life, his popularity with the people and the king, didn't really matter to, the, to others. And in my life, I look at it and think, God, keep me sensitive. Keep me with the ability when a kid talks to me for me to bend down and listen to them, for to hug them back, to care about people around me. Help me stay that way because I want to tell you, you can start getting calloused. Over the last six months, if you, you, you start getting frustrated, you can get callous over the things that are happening. And so I want to stay that. I want to stay on top of it. So he went down and he dipped in the Jordan seven times. So the man of God had told him and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. When Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God, he stood before him and he said, Now I know that there is a God in all the world except in Israel. Please accept now a gift from your servant. The prophet answered, As surely as the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not accept a thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. Now let me say this to you. Elisha later, he did receive from people when he needed it. So did Elijah. There are times to receive and there are times to deny it. And by denying it, he set himself up that he owed Naaman nothing. He owed nobody nothing other than God himself. Oh, you, owe you nothing but love. You need to know when to receive and when to say no to it. When to let go of it. So this is what this man of God did. And, he, and so Naaman said, if you will not, said Naaman, please let me, your servant, be given as much earth as a pair of mules can carry, for your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other god but the Lord. And I love this. But may the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. When my master, see, not only am I a master, not only am I a commander, not only am I an employer, but I also serve an employer who's over me. I got somebody who's over me. But may the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. When my master enters the temple of Renman to bow down, and he is leaning on my arm, and I bow there also, when I bow in the temple of Remnon, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. There are times in life you will live between a rock and a hard place. Your kids will put you in a place that you never dreamed you'd be in. You'll be in a place where your employer will put you in a place. I, I know uh, I've had friends who've worked for, for beer companies, and uh, I mean, through 30 years here. I, and it, whether you were working in... Um, and live in North Carolina, and your friends work in tobacco companies and things that others would look at as a scruple or something that, that maybe they shouldn't do. Listen, sometimes life's between a rock and a hard place. Amen. I've had people come to me and say, Pastor, I won a lottery. Will you take a tithe off of it? I'll take 20% if you'd like to give it. Amen. I'm good with all that. I, I, I've lived between a rock and a hard place. I understand this place, man. And so this is where he was. He said, well, my master does something crazy. And, you know, God forgive me because I'm there to hold his arm and to lift him up. And not only that, I'm the influence in his life. So if, you, if, I, if I'm removed as salt away from him, this man's going to corrupt. So I want to stick with him. May the Lord help me. And I love what Elijah said, go in peace. Go in peace with it. Amen. After Naaman had traveled some distance. Now, he said he dipped seven times. It's a picture of baptism. 
Amen. It's a picture of the old dying, all the leprosy, all the insensitivity, all the things that I've had. Look, this man came with arrogance and pride, but when afterward, he was appreciative. He was thankful. I can see revival going on on the banks of the Jordan. I can see his men going, that's one, that's two, that's three, and the anticipation of wondering what's going to happen after six. That's four, that's five, that's six. And Naaman, Naaman looks at himself when he comes up six. He's still got the warts and his fingers are pulled back and his nose is gone. His ears decapitated and he goes down. And somehow, miraculously, on that seventh time when he comes up, boom, there it is. The flesh of a young boy. He got that. I mean, it's just an amazing. And the people start shouting and screaming and looking at it. And he's excited. You, you don't understand. Stand. Until you've had these kind of miracles, what a great thing it is. Amen. I look at the Burgesses. The first time I met them, I met their son in the hospital who was well, very sick. And I remember praying over that little fella, leaving him a bandana. I didn't even know Bryce. He's just a baby there. But to watch and have an appreciation of having life again and, and to believe God that things are going to be all right. Hallelujah, that God's got me here. And there's this revival. Seven is a powerful number. It deals with rep rep repetition. A lot of times we don't like repetition, you know, but how did you learn math? If you did, it was through repetition. Repetition is powerful. So, so when we read about the number of seven in the Word of God, it deals with completion and perfection. Joshua chapter 6, verse 4, the priest carried the ark uh, on, seven, on a seven-day lapse around the city, seven times, six times around on the seventh day. Amen. They, they made the shout, amen, when they did. Uh, the walls came tumbling down. Isaiah 119, 164 says, Seven times a day I will praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace of they that love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Please get that in your spirit. Uh, great peace of they that love thy law, and nothing shall make them... One, one scripture uses the word, nothing will make them... Um, uh, what's the word? I'm gonna, offended. Oh, I apologize. Good morning, America. How are you? I wonder what we're offended at today. Amen. Great peace. Great peace if they that love your law. And nothing shall make them stumble. Nothing shall offend them. Amen. So, so I look at life and I say, God, help me. to it Seven times. So the issue there is when I worship God and when I give him praise and I thank him for stuff, it keeps me being offended. Proverbs 24, 16. For though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. But the wicked are brought down by calamity. There are times in life, I know you don't feel righteous. If you, if you, here's the thing. Well, if I felt righteous, I wouldn't have fell. Come on. Come on. Huh? You know, listen, I found out through life, I have met some really righteous people, and they have still fallen. They have stumbled. They have fell off the wagon. They have struggled with addictions. But if they keep getting up, I'm still cheering for them. Amen. I'm still pulling for them. I'm, I'm still saying, go get it. You may have went down, but get back up again. Uh, Matthew 18, it was Peter that said, how many times must I forgive John? Seven times? And Jesus said, 70 times seven. If you got to 490 times, it's 70 times seven. Seven is such a repetitious over and over number, but it deals with completion. Duck yourself seven times in that muddy water. And he goes down seven. When he came up on the seventh time, he's clear. He's excited. He goes to Elisha. Take all this stuff. Elisha says no. He said, can I take some dirt? Take some dirt. When I go home, God forgive me if I got to hang out with, the, with corruption. When I got to hang out with people that don't know you. Help me with this. Amen. He was elated. What did he take? He took the dirt. Amen. The story's not over yet. Well, I'd love to tell you it's over. It's not over. Because Elisha also had a servant. And his name was Gehazi. And Gehazi observed what was going on. And he saw it. There are times people get offended on your behalf. You didn't ask for it. But all of a sudden they mad because you should have been offended. That should have bothered you. But it just rolled right off of you. You didn't care. But they cared. Now either they loved you or they've got a, uh, a, um, a conf... No, that's the word ain't confidence. Uh, they... Was it? No, no. I hate when... I can't remember stuff. And it's not because I'm older. I've always been this way. <laughs> yeah, an ulterior motive. That's what it is. Uh, he, he sees something. He's, he misplaced a confidence that he shouldn't have had. Gehazi is foolish. A servant with greed in his heart who overheard the refusals of Elisha. He seized the moment for financial gain. 
Verse 20 says, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha. This, this whole second chapter of Kings is full of uh, business applications. The servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, My master was too easy on Naaman, the Armenian, by not accepting from him what he brought. As surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him. I'll get something from him. You had a servant girl who wanted what's best for her master, Naaman. And you got a servant, Gehazi, who wanted what's best for himself. If you're not careful, you serve selfishly. Go go to the uh, uh, Proverbs 15, 27. Look at this. He that is greedy of gain troubles his own house. You you might win a lottery. It could destroy your house. If you can't learn how to handle a dime on a dollar, amen, if you can't learn how to be a giver in life, you know, one of our problems is, let me just straight up. I'm going, I was going to preach this later, but I'll give you the heads up. One of the problems within our lives is we don't give a dime. Come on, preacher. I said we don't give a dime. Come on. We don't give a dime of our dollar. We don't give a dime of our time. We don't give a dime of our talent. We just don't give a dime. And if God only asks for a dime out of 100% of your life and you can't give him a dime, how are you going to handle life? Well, that's going to preach later. I'm, going, I'm sorry. I just had to go ahead and burp that out. It was inside me for a long time. I was on the lawnmower when that one came to me. And that was a month ago. Woo, come on. Just feels good to get that off my chest. Proverbs 28, 25. A greedy man stirs up dissension. But he who trusts in the Lord will prosper. You know, you can be greedy and have schisms and, and divisions and things you like. Or you, you could trust God and have prosperity. It, that's a powerful thing. Amen. How did he become a leper? Did you know what happened to Gehazi? The same thing that was on Naaman was put on him. He, my master sent me to say, he lied. Two young men came and need assistance, he lied. He gave him, give me a talent, he lied. Your servant has gone nowhere, he lied. Look at it, I'll prove it to you, verse 26. The scripture says, but Elisha said to him, was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money or to accept clothes, olive groves, vineyards, flocks, herds, or men servants and maidservants? Naaman's leprosy will cling to you, to your descendants forever. When Gehazi went from Elisha's presence, he was leprous and white as snow. And it stayed among his descendants. But what he did affected his whole family. Hey Amen. Josiah, if you'd come help me here in close. What we do... Always affects others. Amen. It, it moves down the line. Gehazi, and I can't, I, I, I'm reading into this just a little bit because Gehazi went and he only took uh, a portion of what uh, Naaman had offered. But here's, I, I don't, was he guessing? I mean, the word scripture says, What my spirit with you? It's like I, I, I could see what you were doing. I don't know if that's a way of just wording the language. Because he goes on to say, uh, should we accept olive groves and vineyards, flocks, herds, and men's service? He, he didn't get all of that, but he did get something. And he came back with it. And he became leprous from then on. It came upon him because he was insensitive. He didn't have a sense of, you know, I... Worship keeps us thankful for the provision of God. When I worship, I'm saying thank you. I repeat stories, not for your sake. I repeat them for my sake. I remind myself that, yeah, I've had issues in my life. And I asked God, and He took them away. I believe for it, and it happened. Thanksgiving prompts the spirit of humility. Humility, again, position of strength, is defined as genuine gratitude to God for His mercy, His abundance, His protection, His smile, His favor. Thanksgiving causes life to simplify itself. I I just want it simple. Gratitude is medicine that heals. You want to get well? Start being thankful. You want you want a job? Start being thankful. Amen. You, you want your parents to live longer? Start being thankful. Amen. It's just something about being thankful. Appreciation is exercise that strengthens. Uh, I like exercise. It helps me out. It does strengthen me. But when I'm appreciative, and to be appreciative of people, to be gone for a few days, I look back on this house, I'm so appreciative. 
I, I appreciate the little country church. I appreciate the family of God here. I appreciate my staff and the volunteers. I appreciate my family. I appreciate things that go on. And when you lose that, well, you can see it in somebody's life when they lose that. Elisha saw it in Gehazi. And he said, son, you, you're going to be as leprous. Whatever name it had, you, now you've got it. And he became leprous. These are extreme miracles. For one man to catch it, another man to lose it. Those are extreme. In my life, in your life, we don't want to lose our sensitivity. We don't want to lose the strength and the power of God. Greed and ingratitude affects God. It's amazing, isn't it? It affects Him. There are those that wouldn't give Him thanks. Romans chapter 1 wouldn't give Him thanks. When we don't thank God for His goodness, amen, then our lives turn around for the wrong way. Would you stand with me? Hallelujah. Why don't we just ask? Why don't we just ask? So, well, I, the man, answer may be wrong. Yeah, well, you don't even get an answer unless you ask. Amen. You got to ask. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I'll ask with you. I'll ask with you. If there's something that's pressing on you, whether it be a sickness, relational issues, financial. I'm telling you, there's going to come a little time here when we're going to need jobs and better jobs. Amen. Some got to shift. Some got to change. The money never left the planet. It's still here. We just got to figure out where to tap in. You say, Pastor, I want to ask something tonight, today, and I want you to agree with me it's going to happen. In fact, you put your hand up. Just let me see your hand. Why don't we ask? Why don't we ask? Why don't we ask? Father, in Jesus' name, I agree with the people whose hands up. They're asking right now. And you say if two or three gather together, there you are in the midst of them. And if we ask, we'll receive. If we knock, the door will be open. If we seek, we'll find. So we're asking right now. We're asking for salvation for our children and our family. We're asking God for our friends. God, that addictions be broken from them. We pray that you take the lonely and you put them in families. That the spirit of depression that has moved across this nation over the last six months, that has caused such a desperation in the hearts of the people, that's taken away hope from them, that there'd be no tomorrow. We rebuke that in Jesus' name. We ask you give them hope. We ask that you give them a belief system, God, to trust you right now. God, that things are not going to be this way forever. God, in the name of Jesus, we're looking for better days. We thank you, God, for your mercies on our life. We thank you for taking the leprous conditions from our life. God, of insensitivity. God, of our limbs not being able to produce. God, that you would give us back our eyesight, our vision of 2020. God, you would help us, nation, to get back into a place of understanding. We need to be productive. We need to be moving. We need to fight, God, with one another uh, against the things that are uh, causing such rifts. What love needs to cover this nation. Jesus, you, you were the answer in February. You were the answer in March, April, May. You'll be the answer in November and December in 2021. Eventually, people will turn and realize that they have an expiration date on this earth. And they need to connect and get right with you and fall in love with you the way we did. God, I thank you for this house. I thank you for answering the needs and the testimonies we'll hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God praise. I know many of you are on social media. You know what I'd like to see you do? And it's up to you. I'd like you to write your testimony. Of what God's done in your life. You have no idea how many people see your stuff and they don't hit like. You know, they don't post it. They see it. They, they folk, you don't even know. They stalking you now. They looking at your stuff. So give them something to look at. i tell you what God did for me. I was in anxiety and fear and now I'm in trust and hope. Write your testimony. Amen. Make it plain. The scripture says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Your word is so important. And some of you, you don't talk a lot. So write it down. Post it. Say, this is my testimony. And watch yourself overcome 
fears and anxieties and depressions. That's how you're going to overcome. Write your testimony. Amen. Cheryl, I always look forward to every week you take my preaching and make it sound so much better than what it was. Amen. I'll share her thoughts. saying I wish I'd have thought of that. Amen. I just get, I guess you say I put the bones out and she puts the meat on it. I don't know. You know, I used to say that about Kenneth's preaching. I said, you give me your, you give me your bones, I'll, I'll, I'll put some meat on it and preach it. <laughs> Amen. Love you, church. Be seated for a brief moment. When I say some folk don't give a dime, you know what I mean. But there has to come a time in your life when you say, God, I'm just going to trust you with my finances. Those that are watching online, you need to start trusting God. You staying home doesn't disqualify you. It doesn't give you permission not to give. You're a part of this house. Wherever you live, whether it be California or Montana or North Carolina, you're still a part of this house. Amen. So support this ministry. Help. We didn't stop supporting our missionaries. We didn't support, stop supporting local ministries. We didn't stop that. We didn't stop. And you're giving to God. Amen. And yes, it's through the church. That's how he set it up. I didn't set it up. He set it up. So this is how we give. So whether it be online, or if you need an envelope, I think there's envelopes there in the pews. Amen. Use that. Uh, you, you say you skipped a week. That don't mean you skipped your tithe. You still honor God. You give your dime. And every area, they, when I pull up on this property and I see the grass mowed, I thought somebody gave a dime here. Amen. Don't make me cuss. Somebody gave a dime here. Somebody gave their time. Somebody gave, they, they blessed, they helped, they strengthened. Amen. When I told you two weeks ago, 25,000 25, churches will be closed by the end of this month. They're shutting the doors. Some have the finances online because they, able, they were set up early. Others, others drug behind and, didn't, and they lost their congregations. Some of them not even going to church now. I'm inviting folk. Man, if you ain't got a church, you need to be in this house. Amen. You're a good in congregation today. We got to believe God for that. David, if you come and make a few announcements here, I just wanted to make sure you understood on the 27th, we will be having Muscle Car Sunday. And we'll do all the precautions that we normally do to look after folk. But we got to live with this thing. Amen. We got to live with it. I live with copperheads, black widows. You, you live with stuff. Amen. We live with it. We'll get through it. Amen. Amen. We have Seniors with a Purpose Bible Study. That will be August 9th. That's the second Sunday every single month. That is today, yeah. Uh, well, I was just I was reading the rest of it here. Uh, I, I, I struggle with what day it is. I feel like my days just fly by. So August 9th, Seniors with a Purpose. You guys need to say anything? Just come hang out with them. Come hang out with them. They're going to have coffee. I'm sure they're going to have some refreshments. I normally do, um, and I know it'll be delicious. And not only that, it's fellowship. Whether whether you're senior or not, the truth is we all need fellowship. It sharpens us, it strengthens us. Uh, I don't know how people are making it right now in today's day and age without friends, without family, without. It, it, it's got to be it's got to be very very difficult for people that are on their own. So if you are, connect with people. There's people in this church. If they're not in this church, find somebody to connect with. Amen. Tuesday nights, two or more. Uh, that's the prayer meeting that happens every Tuesday night with HD. Prayer night every Tuesday, except for the first Tuesday of the month, which is going to be our service. Please write down uh, your prayer request. Be specific for your prayer. Um, the team of two or more, drop your prayers off in the prayer box in the back. CHDH, is there anything you want to say about that? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the truth. They they not seers. They not gonna just start guessing that stuff. I promise. They gonna pray for what's in the box. So, so just go ahead and if if you have requests, I mean, Pastor said today, if there's things you're believing for, put it in there. Ask. Exactly, it's ask. I mean, and not only that, it says we're two or more. So here you go. You get you get other people believing with you which is even better, that our faith will be connected and, and we're going to see stuff happen on Tuesday night prayer. Come and be a part also. It's at 7 o'clock. 
uh, August 14th, Ladies Ministry Crosby Campus Movie Night at Crosby Campus Fellowship Hall. Bring a chair and munchies to share. All ladies are welcome. See Miss Cheryl for details. Anything? Nope. nope. Come and join them. There you go. Come hang out. Um, oh, uh, yeah. She just wants to know a show of hands. Who might actually be coming? Got a couple guys in the back. All right. <laughs> Apparently, they're going to be security to make sure all the food is correct. <laughs> all right. So, um, and, and that's going to be at 6.30. I didn't have it here, but 6.30. Um, if you guys have any questions, see Miss Cheryl. She'll definitely answer anything uh, when it's not in the, in the whole church. Um, August 16th is TLCC Family Swim Day. Sunday 16th, um, 3 through 5 p.m. All age students and families welcome to join uh, for a back to school swim party. See Miss Marley, she's not here today, but um, if you guys want to come and just hang out at the North Campus, uh, the Barnes came out and hung out with us the other day. It's it's beautiful, big, giant swimming pool with lots of floaties and lots of other things. There's slides, it's pretty. Josiah make sure it's pretty every week and uh, so if you guys want to just come out and hang out again it's fellowship we're just going to go swimming and uh, bring your kids it's going to be fun uh, August 16th lift Bible studies that's the third Sunday of every month see Miss Diane I don't see her today come on that's great third Sunday of the month Okay, so see Miss Diane for uh, if you guys have any questions on that. That's going to be. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, see Miss Diane. Miss Diane will be back. Uh, today we're believe. Yeah, that, that wasn't confusing at all. So <laughs> today we're believing for jobs and better jobs, more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money. Bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and return, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. They're in the back. Lord, I thank you for today. I bless all the givers in the house. I bless all the givers online, Lord, that their lives will be pressed down, shaken together and overflowing. Lord, because we know when we tithe and when we sow into your kingdom, Lord, you're going to overflow our lives and we're believing for that i thank you for every a blessed week keep us safe keep us like you and most importantly lord keep us soft and malleable so that we can continue to affect our kingdom and our places in jesus name amen and amen